Right, I'm going to um, begin, um, Andrew, a question for you. I mean, it must be so nice when you've kind of been making films in Hollywood and across the entire world. It must be so nice every now and again just to, to go back to your kind of roots and make a film back in Ireland. Oh, it's so nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that's one of the chief one of the chief reasons I, I, I want to do the film. I made a film with John Butler, the director before, called The Stag. And John is a great, great friend of mine. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, that's one of the great things. I know a lot of the, the crew um, for, for, for years. You just know them from, I used to make a lot of films back in, in, in Dublin. And actually over the past five years, I've, I've, um, I've wanted to um, make more films in, in, in Ireland because uh, things are really buzzing over there. So yeah, it's cool, and it was nice to to, to, to do um, to go back and play the teacher, <laughs> the old guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love as well. Oh, thanks. I mean, when it comes then because of that, I mean, does it sort of get to the point where John says, "Well, I've got this project, I've got a role." Was it almost like a yeah? I'll, I'll probably get involved quite early from the offset, or do you still need to come and be the script major of the cast? Oh, yeah, no, I'd I'd want to still be. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, I won't do any old any old work. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what is it? Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, I'll play a mermaid. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, but having said that, there is a sort of feeling of trust, um, and uh, I know John's sensibilities pretty well now, um, and I know that he needs somebody to improve his writing. <laughs> do you know to make something of his terrible, yeah. lazy. Yeah, we um, actually wrote most of it. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. Exactly. Try to do something with it. Yeah. I know. I know John Sensible. He's very, very, very fun. So actually, when you go back in, you, you do have a short time, which is a, a great pleasure. I'm uh, doing it, and we did discuss um, the character I play, Mr. Sherry, a good bit about how we can sort of make it um, as um, distinct as possible. I feel like this is your biggest role today. I mean, you must be so excited now. It's kind of being screened. And Give me starting that. To, starting to sort of do interviews for it, like that. It must start to feel really real now. Yeah, absolutely. This was my first time playing uh, the lead in anything. I, I'd played kind of the characters and stuff like that, but um, yeah, it was my first time playing the lead. So going in, I was, I was pretty pretty nervous. Um, but yeah, it's kind of surreal being over here and doing things like this, uh, which I've never done and not saying anything terrible <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that, yeah. And I mean, of course, I mean, you might have been a lot more kind of Squad, I'm not actually too sure, but I mean, we can all kind of resonate with the underdog, I guess. So is this a character that you felt you kind of share quite a lot of confidence? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, in terms of, uh, in, in, sorry, yeah, no, sorry, yeah, I, absolutely. In, in terms of school life, I kind of didn't get as bad a rap as Ned. You know, he gets, um, but but everyone at, at, a, at a certain point is trying to find themselves yeah. and, and find out more about themselves and, and their identity and everything like that. So I think it's, uh, yeah, it, it was it was quite easy to, to identify with all that kind of stuff. But, I mean, Andrew, obviously you're playing a teacher. I mean, was there any one teacher in particular that you were kind of remembering when you were kind of crafting this role, someone that kind of had in mind? Um, I don't have to name them. <laughs> Not really, actually. No, there, there weren't. Um, I think what's really important is that... Um, he has an interest in the kids, um, uh, but he's not too interested in them. I think that was the, the biggest challenge because I think if you're sort of what you like, I think when teachers are overly interested in students, you're a bit like that's a bit creepy. <laughs> so it was that was the balance. That was the the balance. The sort of that he was interested in, but he's got obviously has hundreds of children to teach, and he you know he wants to get involved, and because it becomes a personal. That there's a personal aspect, obviously, to the story, and so it was to try and get the balance between being interested and and not being too interested. And so I, they're they're teachers that I kind of liked at school. They were the ones that were you always um, uh, uh, fluctuate towards the teacher at school who um, is interested in you as a person, because whatever about the syllabus and what's written on the on the thing, which of course you have to abide by a little bit. The person who says, "Who are you? Who are you? What are you saying?" Sort of hiding behind that and bring that out of you um, is the one that you remember long after you remember your the results you got, whether you got an F or whether you got an A. I walked into a teacher of mine quite recently, and it was one of those things where I called him sort of sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah. true. My mom was a teacher, and uh, so we uh, we used to uh, in the summer holidays we used to meet Highness. <laughs> uh, that will be really embarrassed and whatever but my mum was a popular teacher and my sister is a teacher now so I see that a lot that thing where you can't associate um, you can't
can't associate the person outside the classroom. And, and are there a handful of space or classrooms in this movie? Yeah, I mean, thank you. Yeah, he's, not, he's done some incredible work in this movie. Yeah. Father Dougal McGuire to me. I mean, there must be great to spend time with him and, and have some elements to be, not just spend time with him, but place him so close to him in the movie as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, he, and he's lovely. And I mean, yeah, because growing up, you know, well, Father Ted is a phenomenon in Ireland, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Like, yeah, and kind yeah. of all over the place. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of surreal, actually, kind of me- meeting him. Um, but, yeah, no, he's lovely, and it was really cool to to be able to play to play his son and to kind of uh, chat to him and find out all about him. I went to Craggy Island last year, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah, the, the cup of tea. Did yeah. you get your cup of tea there? But, um, <laughs> but something that's always grabbed me about, not just about Ted, but even a bit of and Hans and Devon as well. There's something very distinct about Irish comedy, which is almost you're quite you're sort of self-aware. You kind of know that certain, the way you might be able to deliver a certain line is funny. And mm-hmm. I was wondering if that's something you've always kind of been aware of that there were certain kind of mannerisms and sensibilities to the kind of um, so, so I, Irish kind of I don't know dialogue, I suppose. Yeah. That is funny, which I suppose usually is very hard to tell from when you're inside. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think it is. I think that's true. Uh, but I think that's probably true of any nation and what kind of humour they have. But I live outside of Ireland. Um, uh, but actually going back, you do notice there is a sort of Irish sense of humour that's quite... Um, how would I describe it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> TV gold here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, what do you think of it? Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah. I was wondering, I mean, uh, also, there's obviously here in Toronto uh, for the festival. I was just wondering, when you sort of come to festivals like this, I was wondering how much time you have to be tourists. It's very much kind of work, work, work. Have you had the chance to see much of Toronto since you've been here? Have you got, are you going to be doing much in the United City? Um, I'm f- I'm filming at the moment in uh, Georgia, in Griffin, in Georgia, and I came off a uh, night shoot, finished at 7 a.m., got on a flight, did lots of press. So I did this other movie here called Denial uh, yesterday, and today I have all press for Handsome Devil, and I'm going back at 5 o'clock. So this bar, this um, is the most I've seen of Toronto. It's but a great Fion- bar, though. It's, it's a, a great, great bar. Canadian <laughs> bar. How yeah. about you, uh, yeah, <laughs> I I also got off a flight last night uh, and went straight into doing kind of photos and stuff, and, and then the premiere, and then this so far. T- I think tomorrow I'm gonna get a chance to to go and see CN Tower. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. See some movies. But so it's yeah. The movies here. I mean, yeah, sorry. See the see the movies. Yeah. The movies here are crazy. And then he's going off to LA, get some um, plastic surgery. Yes. Yeah. Full yeah, and just some like muscle, like one of those yeah. muscle implants. You're aging, Phil. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel a bit, a little bit like the quiet before the storm? You know, that this film's going to get come out. It's going to get quite obviously quite a big release, and you've got the siege of Jatterfield. Jatterfield. Yeah, I mean, does this feel quite like you're just on the verge of, you know, being recognised in the street? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, yeah. Well, who knows? I, I, I don't really know what's going to happen. I, I, I wouldn't say kind of. That I feel like it's the the calm before the storm. I'm just trying to take kind of everything in my stride here, and if that happens, that would be that'd be amazing. But um, yeah, maybe I don't know. Do you think it's the calm before the storm, Andrew? I think it's the um, the storm before the calm. Oh. That's this is it. <laughs> this is the stormiest. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all this is the fucking here. stormiest it's gonna get for yeah. me. Before the before it all goes silent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is us. We're looking forward to this interview coming out. Bit of publicity. Hey, you guys. <laughs> um, guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and because obviously, imagine you mentioning how you did have that kind of shorthand with John. And that, yeah. I mean, that must have made it really easy for you to come onto this to this set. When did it feel like you were kind of walked into an environment that did look very accessible? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Treasure, I think, always kind of get together. Um, Treasure always kind of get together. They're kind of they have a little kind of family almost. Yeah, and yes, yeah, the production company. And and so it felt, yeah, they they, they felt very welcoming yeah. to to come in and, and be working with 
with John and Andrew and, and all the people in, in Treasure and, and the crews of Cahill, the DLP and yeah. everything. It, it did feel like you were just kind of coming into a, a family, kind yeah. of welcoming yeah. you with open arms. It was great. One of the things I love about the film as well is it's very kind of realistic, but at the same time there's, there's real kind of surrealism. Felt to it, something a bit kind of um, a sort of heightened take on, on reality. Was that something that you got from the screenplay, or do you feel that was almost put into kind of post production? I think that's the thing that John is really, really interested in American um, comedies, um, and he's he's a, a big, um, he's very passionate about how um, comedies are underrated. And I think he's right. That sense that um, because something is uh, to a certain degree lighter in tone or lighter in subject, that it's somehow a lesser art form, and um, so. Uh, that kind of American boarding school, 1980s, 90s thing is uh, is what he would have grown grown up with. Um, um, so, yeah, he spoke about that a lot. He spoke about that a lot. But that's the way he wanted it to sort of look. And then they, they definitely added to it in, um, in post-production. So, yeah, so I've been following on, on from that. I mean, did, you, did you find John was giving a quite a bit of freedom to, to kind of improvise at all? Or was this, was this still very loyal to the screen? Uh, no, we did improvise. <laughs> <laughs> we did improvise a bit, yeah. Jo with John, uh, he, we do a sort of um, written improvisation, so he's obviously involved in it. We did one scene I remember particularly where there was this. Um, there's a talent show in the in the in the in the, in the, in the film, and the guy who played one of the other acts that Fiona is competing against was phenomenal. Do you remember him, the break dancing guy? So um, I think it's is that still in the movie that thing that we did where we yeah, just had to be like, yeah. like he was so brilliant. One of the other guys, little. Um, um, what was his name? Clinton. Clinton, yeah, Clinton was a was a brilliant dancer. So uh, we had to. So you do that thing that's based on who the actor is, and uh, so we did lots of um, just 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 to keep it alive because that's what people like. They like seeing the, the actors alive on the screen. So. Uh. So when you have played a, a comedy, I mean, perhaps more so than say a drama or a thriller or anything like that. I mean, are you able to enjoy it as an audience member? But do you almost know? the joke so well that they're just not funny anymore. Or do you, are you still that does happen. Anymore? That does happen. Yeah, and I think there's also, it's funny because we were talking about it last night, there's some kind of uh, jokes that, like when you see the screening the first time, everyone's kind of laughing at this yeah. joke and then you see it another time and it's actually, it's a different joke yeah, that everyone's yeah, laughing at it, yeah. and you're kind of like, oh, that, thought that was funny. <laughs> 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 thought that was funny when I said that. No, uh, yeah. yeah, so it's, it's uh, I, I think I can, I think I can appreciate it's, it's easier to kind of, I suppose, laugh at the kind of jokes that I think other people are saying as well, yeah, more, isn't yeah, it? Rather than your own character. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. yeah. But last night it played amazingly well at the, yeah. in Toronto. You know, the, it's r always really gratifying, you know, because in the theatre, obviously, you get immediate gratification from the audience, but you have to wait. Um, to, you know, last night was the first public screening of, of, um, of Handsome Devil, so to see them. Um, um, laughing and clapping at certain lines and stuff last yeah. night was amazing, really brilliant. Uh, I mean, and, and you've obviously discussed the kind of um, how great it was on set, it felt obviously <laughs> quite, uh, you often get kind of independent cinema as well, where it all feels like they're really putting in the same direction, mm. kind of sense of the uh, community, I guess. Have you ever known in your career, because you've basically been on big blockbusters, mm. has that ever been the case on a big blockbuster? Is that almost impossible when you've got that many people on a huge set? Well, actually on Spectre, um, Sam Mendes was really um, interested in creating that kind of atmosphere too, um, because he's the theatre man, um, and because in the theatre the guy who has two lines has, is there as much as the guy who has two hundred lines. He used to show up every night at seven thirty, um, so it makes for an atmosphere where everybody feels that they've got something con contrib con contribute, and that is very authentic. Because if you don't have the clapper loader or the gaffer or the, the guy, the extras. Um, background artists, I should say, uh, they, they, um, they, they, um, you can't make the film. So everybody is, that's why it's so much fun. And everybody, you do need somebody to do everything. And um, that's why rap parties are always so um, uh, raucous, because everybody loses their role and everybody's like, what do we do? And so they just drink through it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Everybody's like, ah, and they go crazy. Um, so sort of coming to a festival promoting a film, like this is feel like a continuation of the project. So I guess when you all say goodbye like at the rap party, mm. you all go off and do sort of separate things. It must be a nice means of kind of coming back together. Yeah, and to celebrate, really to celebrate the film, to see what you've done and to see people laughing, that's something that you've created is amazing. And yeah, of course you get, I'm holding this, look where I'm holding this. <laughs> I think there's an easier way to do this. No, that's right. No, that's right. Is this it? Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and do I, where do I, oh, yeah. yes. All right, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Sorry. Um, um, uh, anyway, etc. Uh, no, you, you you nailed it. No, you nailed, you nailed it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, my, my final question uh, is just you mentioned denial, which is also dangerous. Yeah. So if you could tell us a little bit about your role in that film and what audiences are. And denial is is the story of a court case, um, um, a libel case that was um, um, was issued by a man called David Irving, who was accused of being a Holocaust denier by a woman called Deborah Lipstadt in the 1990s. And the, the court case is about that. Um, and I play Anthony Julius, who uh, was her solicitor and um, who was um, known as the cleverest man in Britain. He was Princess Diana's divorce lawyer. And, uh, uh, he uh, was a solicitor, and um, it stars Rachel Weiss and Tom Wilkinson and Tim Spall. And um, uh, yeah, but that also played last night before Handsome Devil. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, that's out at the end of the month, I think. Is yeah. Another charming Irish comedy, then. Not another charming Irish <laughs> comedy. Uh, although that is funny too, I should say, even though it's a Holocaust movie. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Mate. Thanks, Emil. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, yeah. Is that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Nice. Hey, 